Hello chess friends and welcome to Zarov's chess channel and welcome to our Garika Sparov saga. So in this series we're following Garika Sparov's life and his chess career from the year 1981 to 2000 and we're continuing the series with the 1983 candidates quarterfinal between uh, Garika Sparov and Alexander Belyavsky. So, so far I have covered two games and uh, they have been really incredible with great attacking elements, with great tactics. So today I will show you again a beautiful, beautiful chess game. I'm really glad that I started this Garika Sparov saga because we'll see so many beautiful chess games. It's really incredible the percentage of beautiful chess games that Garika Sparov has, uh, has played. I don't think that I've seen any boring game. Even if Garika Sparov loses a game, you have to play really an attacking brilliance in order to uh, beat the beast from Baku. So that's why I really love this saga. I really love this uh, series. And today, be prepared again. A beautiful, simply a beautiful chess game. So let's check out now uh, the game here. Alexander Belyavsky played with the white pieces. Uh, Garika Sparov was in the lead. So far, he had uh, one more win uh, than. Um, than Alexander Belyavsky, but here uh, Belyavsky had to make something happen in order to equalize the result. So here Belyavsky opened with the move d4. Kasparov responded with move knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop to g7, and after e4 and d6, we have the king's Indian. And uh, I'm really uh, glad when I see Gary Kasparov playing the, the king's Indian, as I am myself, I'm king's Indian player. And uh, we'll see now the Samish attack by Belyavsky and have my troubles uh, against the Samish. The Samish can be really annoying, but here Gary Kaspar will pull off really a beautiful attack against uh, the Samish attack. So he played a great counter attack. Here f3, the common setup of the Samish. The main idea is to build bishop uh, build up here with bishop e3, queen to d2, then to play a bishop to h6 h4 h5 or g4 or similar ideas just uh, to make some kind some kind of an expansion after potential castling trading off uh, the dark school bishop on g7 get the queen somehow on the h file and deliver checkmate on on, on the h file that's the main goal sort of of the same ish attack one other thing is uh, when um, uh, black breaks the position in the center is to keep a compact uh, position around the square d4 so this is a very annoying setup for black to handle. In the game, Kasparov played the natural castling. We have bishop to e3. And I myself most of the time played the move e5. Uh, it's playable. But uh, I really like more and more this idea by Gary Kasparov. Although I'm not so well prepared, I think, in this line. Here he played the move a6. So, okay. Uh, what to do here now from white's perspective? If you play something like knight from uh, g to e2, then you cut off a little bit uh, the connection between the bishop and the pawn. So, in some occasions, you can see a gambit line by black with potential b5 after potential knight from g uh, from g to e2. So, here, that's why Belyavsky played the move bishop to d3. He tries to uh, stay with the connection between the bishop and the pawn. So, now uh, he has a good protection of the b5. Uh, so b5 is not a possibility but then that was i think gary kasparov's uh trick because he wanted uh, the bishop to come on d3 because he played now really a beautiful gambit line with move c5 it's is possible sometimes to play the move c5 even if you have to sacrifice a pawn but now the activity that gary kasparov will gain uh, through this uh, gambit line is really incredible after d takes c5 we have d takes c5 and now the best way, believe me or not, is simply to proceed here with the move e5. Then f4, knight to d7, f4, okay, white is slightly better, white has the expansion, white has a little bit more space because white has, of course, uh, the expanded pawn on e5, has a pawn on the fifth rank, which is very well protected. But here, uh, Belyavsky goes for simply for the pawn, and now comes really the attacking storm by Gary Kasparov. Here, knight to c6. The, this is a normal developing move. But the problem is now the bishop is a little bit loose on the board. So you have um, played already with your bishop once. You have taken the pawn. So it's a second tempo. And, and you lose another tempo in order to retreat with the bishop. So at least Gary Kasparov has some kind of a uh, compensation for the pawn. You have to move knight to c6, knight, from, uh, knight to e2, and now knight to d7. Now you see the bishop becomes really an object of black's attack. Bishop to f2, and now knight to e5. You see the harmony now of uh, white, uh, pardon me, of black's pieces. The bishop is very well. The knights are centralized. The queen is here. And the good part is that the bishop on d3 cuts off uh, here the connection between the queens. So 
Kari Kasparov does have to uh, does have to trade off the queen so he can stay with the queens on the board of course when you're pawn down you want to want to have more uh, more pieces on the board because then you can complicate position so here after move knight to e5 we have knight to c1 and now comes bishop to h6 the idea is clear bishop takes h6 and then take out the bishop on d3 so that's why knight to d5 here e6 kicking away the knight and we have bishop to b6 to play by beliavsky and now queen to g5 great attacking formation so far by kasparov although down a pawn here uh beliavsky castled and we have of course e takes d5 but beliavsky has a counter attack of course he can uh, grab a piece f4 you see how dynamic this game already is uh in the game kasparov played queen to h4 and now we have f takes e5 so what what you do now most of us would probably play something like d takes e4 but it would be a bad line uh, although you're kicking away uh, the bishop uh, but here i really like gary kasparov's idea he played the move d4 he locked really this bishop out of game uh the knight is protecting this pawn now there is the clear idea to play bishop to e3 and we have now perfect perfect attacking harmony here black is already better so in the game uh Belyavsky tried knight to e2 uh, he tried of course to attack the pawn in the game we have bishop to e3 and now king to h1 knight takes e5 so okay you see the problems of uh, of white uh, white has played also this uh, with the bishop uh, now once you see the bishop is attacked and the bishop is blocked out by its own pawn so what you do here from white's perspective there are basically no good moves even if you take here uh the the pawn bishop takes d4 then it gets really dangerous because you get knight to g4 we have a uh, checkmate threat you're forced really to play the move h3 and now after bishop takes d4 knight takes d4 knight to f2 the fork rook takes f2 uh, and now after queen to f2 still the knight is hanging white uh, is lost here i think because in the next move we'll play simply something like rook to d8 develop our like square bishop somewhere uh, maybe here to e6 getting these rooks and it's a bad position here for for white the king is in danger and i think it will be game over so that's why after the move knight to e5 we have bishop to c7 trying a counter attack on the knight but now queen to e5 uh queen to e7 attacking the bishop bishop takes e5 and now queen to e5 so okay let's evaluate the position so many tactics so far and um the position is obviously better for black black has the bishop pair in an open game uh, the material is equal so six pawns for both sides but i simply like this bishop on e3 it's really <coughs> it's really an annoying bishop to handle basically there are no, no good minor pieces to attack the bishop what you could do probably is somehow to attack maybe the weak d4 pawn but okay in the game a queen to e1 uh, played by Belyavsky, we have bishop to d7 this is really in an engine move uh, here by Kasparov. Most of us, I think, would play something like bishop to g4, but it's really unnecessary. The bishop is much more important. Bishop to d7 and now bishop to c6, where the bishop comes on this diagonal in the game uh, after bishop to d7, queen to g3, and now Kasparov activates simply the pieces. Now he's satisfied, of course, with the position, even if. The queens are now off the board even if the position is more simplified then we can simply hang on to our uh, bishop pair and open maybe the position with move f5 or even here with b5 open some files some diagonals so it's a perfect perfect position for for the bishop pair so knight to f4 uh, what belyavsky is of course trying is to get the knight on a very active square on d5 we have bishop to six six and now knight to d5 here kasparov trades off simply now the queens we have h takes g3 and again we have a new weakness you see again these uh, pawns are weakness these pawns although they are protected uh, by the bishop still i would count them as a weakness as the bishop is always stuck uh, to the defense of the pawn so the bishop cannot play freely so this bishop is basically a pawn here and it's incredible how uh, gary kasparov calculated this everything and uh, now he has really a comfortable game after rook to e5 he simply activates the pieces on the best next square we have g4 if we try here something like knight takes e3 it's not a problem because we can simply take d takes e3 and if you try for instance to attack the pawn then we can simply take that's the main tactical shot that uh, kasparov has prepared here if you take the pawn then you get bishop to g2 and you simply lose too, too much the size of material here after rook to e3 uh black is continuing the game with the rooks and it's game over here for for white so 
Here Belyavsky, as I said, tried g4. Uh, he's trying probably uh, to play something like knight to f6 and try maybe somehow to uh, to cement the knight, but it's really a bad position. You don't have a good activity with your pieces in the game. Uh, here Gasparo played the move h5, knight to f6 was played, and now king to g7. We have g takes h5, and now Kasparov uh, creates this very annoying attack by the rook. Uh, the pop, uh, the the pawn is pinned, you cannot take. And in the game, uh, g3 was played. Here comes now, really, the Gary Kasparov move. Uh, that's what I really liked about this game. Here, Gary Kasparov he realized that when we evaluate the pieces on the board, the rook is okay, it's not out of game, but it hasn't played so far, so it's a bad rook. So, so far, the bishop is, as I said, as a pawn. So, we shouldn't count this bishop as a, as a piece, it's really a pawn. So, white is here, uh, three pawns. So what to do here? Here Gary Kasparov realizes that uh, it's really a good, good now position for the bishop pair and it, the, the position has to be open and he played a monstrous uh, rook, tax, rook sacrifice, rook to h5, knight to h5 and now rook to h5, king to g2 and now f5. That's the uh, main tactical preparation. Great move here and now after rook to uh, e1 we have... Um, f takes e4 we have now two connected uh, pass pawns here the bishop is again out of game in the game bishop to b1 was played and now rook to c5 b3 b5 you see just opening the position for the bishop pair activating all of the pieces uh here rook takes e3 again a desperate try here by beliavsky but there are really no better moves uh, we have d takes e3 rook to e1 we can uh, b takes c4 b takes c4 rook to c4 rook to e3 and now rook to b4 uh, the idea is of course to attack the bishop but the bishop doesn't have good square so that's why uh, beliavsky had to trade off the rooks rook takes uh, pardon me e3 was played we have um, king to f1 and now bishop to b5 attacking the king king to e1 and now simply a5 bishop to e4 Okay, what Bilyavsky hoped for that Gary Kasparov will take, then he can take, then we have a rook ending and it could be a draw, but now uh, simply rook takes b3, after a takes b3, the king comes very actively into the game. We have g5, uh, we have king to c2, and now king to e5 in this position, Bilyavsky resigned. So why did he resign? Whatever you do, if you try, for instance, something like bishop to g2 to stay on this diagonal, then the king will move simply up and... Uh, if you try something like d1, uh, king to d1, then we'll simply play king to c3. If you try the uh, king to um, b2, then you're far away from the action and uh, this pawn, pawn will march on. So if you try something like now bishop to f3, then we can play bishop to d3, uh, again king to b2. Or if you try king to c1, again king to c3, and there's nothing you can do. We'll simply play uh, e2 and you cannot... Uh, Get your king here to d1 and will simply have a promotion so white needs to give up the bishop or the pawn and it's of course a completely winning end game here for black so incredible game really by Gary kasparov let's go back really an interesting line this um pawn sacrifice so here d takes c5 d takes c5 and now bishop knight to c6 and now simply attacking knight to e5 bishop to h6 really Every next move was an attacking move by Gary Kasparov, knight to d5, e6. So great, great performance. And now after f4, what I really liked here, uh, this bishop to e3, when uh, Gary Kasparov managed to cement this bishop very actively here, it was game over for Belyavsky. So great, great game. We'll see in the continuation one another game played by uh, Gary Kasparov against Belyavsky, and then we'll move up to the semifinals, which will be even better than, than the quarterfinals. Every stage that Gary Kasparov managed to get through were better and better, and then, of course, we'll have the super final between uh, Gary Kasparov and the world champion from uh, from the 80s, Anatoly Karpov. So, okay, I hope that you enjoy this game. I really enjoy these games a lot. Uh, if you want to see uh, the series from the beginning, here's the link with more uh, Gary Kasparov games. And if you want to learn more about chess, check out my Basics in Chess series videos in which I show you opening principles, middle game strategies, and the end game strategies. And if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best, of course.